Good morning. Today we're going to walk through my solutions to the third mechanics free response question of the AP Physics C 1998 released exam. AP is a registered trademark of the College Board which was not involved in the production of and does not endorse this product. Here we go. Hey guys. Hey Bob. Uh, hi Bob. Flippin' Physics. Question number three. We have two blocks. Block one and block two. One is on top of two. And then block two is on top of a table. Block two has a string attached to it, which then goes over a pulley, and it's attached to a block capital M. There is friction between the two blocks, and that is labeled coefficient of static friction one and coefficient of uh, kinetic friction one. And then between so the second block and the table, we have a coefficient of static friction two and coefficient of kinetic friction two. Now, I have a hard time writing a capital M and distinguishing that from a lowercase m. So rather than using a capital M, I'm going to use a lowercase m sub lowercase h for mass hanging. In addition, for the forces of friction, I'm going to use for the first one capital F lowercase f and a 1 for force of friction 1 and then force of friction 2. It just makes it easier for me to distinguish when I'm writing everything out. Part A states that the hanging mass is small enough such that the whole thing remains at rest and asks for various forces acting on various objects. And rather than doing it that way, I'm actually going to start with the free body diagram of all the forces acting on all the objects. Uh, I see it a lot better that way because all the objects interact with one another and all the forces interact. And so seeing the whole picture first is, I think, the best way to start. And then we'll pick out the individual pieces, which are the answers to parts A, I, through, I believe, V. Uh, here we go. So I start by redrawing the picture and separating the two blocks because there are forces that interact between these two and having them right on top of one another makes it very difficult to see all those forces. And starting with the forces of gravity, each one of them emanates from the center of mass of the object. So we have force of gravity one, force of gravity two, and the force of gravity for the mass hanging. Uh, now we're going to do the tensions in the string. We have tension and tension. Those are going to be the same. And it's in the direction of a pole and is acts where the string attaches to the different masses. So we have the tension on mass two and the tension on the mass hanging. And again, those are two are equal. I do wish that the pulley were not massless. Then we would have two different tensions here. We'd have tensions on the pulley itself and we could do net torque and things like that. But it's not the way the problem was set up. Now we're going to talk about the force normals. We have a force normal 2 that acts up on block 2, and that's from the interaction between the table and block 2. And we have a force normal that acts up on block 1, and that comes from the interaction of block 2 and block 1. And notice that both of those forces act on the surface where that interaction occurs. And we also have a force normal 1 that acts down on block 2. That's because these two forces are a Newton's third law interaction pair. For every force 1, 2, there exists an equal but opposite force 2, 1. For every force that the block 2 exerts on block 1, there is an equal but opposite force that block 1 exerts on block 2. So these two forces are a Newton's third law interaction pair, and they both exist in our free body diagram. And they should have the same magnitude, they should be the same length, but in opposite directions. I've done my best, they appear to be pretty darn close. Please notice that there also is a force, an equal but opposite force for Newton's, uh, for the, the normal force two right here. It just acts downward on the table, and we're not drawing a free body diagram of the forces acting on the table. Now let's talk about the forces of friction. You can see that this tension force is trying to pull this set of blocks to the right. And the force of friction is always parallel to the surface, opposes motion, and is independent of the direction of the force applied. There's no force applied, so that doesn't really matter in this particular case. Now, it's going to be parallel to the surface, so it's parallel to the tabletop, and opposes motion, so it's going to prevent this set of blocks from moving to the right. So it is opposite the direction of this tension and is to the left. So we have a force of friction two between block two and the table acting to the left. Now, there is no force of friction on block one at this point because the velocity is equal to zero. There are no other forces in the x direction on block one. Therefore, there isn't going to be a force of friction on block one at this time. 
Now that we've drawn our complete free body diagram, we can answer the individual questions. AI, the normal force one on mass one, is going to be on the bottom of mass one, pushing upward. It's the interaction between mass two and mass one, so it's going to be right at that surface. The force of friction one on mass one, well, again, because it's at rest, there is no force of friction on mass one. A triple I, the tension force on mass two, that's going to be a pull by the string to the right and is right where the string attaches to the mass two. Normal force two is the interaction between the tabletop and mass two as the tabletop pushes upward on mass two, therefore it's going to be upward right at that interaction, right where that surface, those two surfaces interact. And then A, V. This is the force of friction two on mass two. Again, it opposes motion, so it's going to be to the left because that tension force is trying to pull it to the right and is parallel to the surface. Therefore, it's going to be at the interaction between mass two and the tabletop and is going to be to the left right there. Part B, we need to figure out the maximum mass hanging such that the whole thing will remain at rest or the velocity will be equal to zero. Uh, what we need to do now is sum the forces. And remind me, Bo, whenever you sum the forces, what are the two things you need to identify? Uh, you need to identify the direction and... And what object? Or objects you are summing the forces on. That's right, thanks. Correct. Please remember, whenever you sum the forces, you need to identify the direction and what objects you're summing the forces on. Let's start out by summing the forces on mass one in the y direction. On mass one in the y direction, we have normal force one, which is up and therefore positive, and the force of gravity one, which is down and therefore negative. Whenever you sum the forces, it's always equal to mass times the acceleration. In this particular case, it's going to be mass one because we sum the forces on mass one and the acceleration of mass one in the y direction. Now, the acceleration of mass one in the y direction is equal to zero. Therefore, the net force in the y direction on mass one is equal to zero. Now, we can add the force of gravity one to both sides and we get that normal force one is equal to force of gravity one, which is equal to mass one times the acceleration due to gravity which we can now put in our equation holster. Equation, equation holster. We can now sum the forces in the y direction on mass two. In the y direction, we have normal force two, which is up and therefore positive, normal force one, which is down and therefore negative, and the force of gravity two, which is also down and therefore also negative. Again, the sum of the forces is always equal to mass times acceleration. In this case, it's mass two times acceleration two in the y direction. And the acceleration of block two in the y direction is zero. Therefore, again, the net force in the y direction on mass two is equal to zero. Therefore, we can add normal force one and force of gravity two to both sides. And we get that normal force two is equal to normal force one plus the force of gravity two. And we can substitute in from our equation holster, normal force one is mass one times the acceleration due to gravity. And we know force of gravity two is equal to mass two times the acceleration due to gravity. And again, equation holster. Equation, equation holster. holster. Now what we're gonna do is so we're gonna sum the forces on the whole thing in what I'm going to identify as the positive direction. Now, I've done this in blue because this is so often forgotten by students. This is the direction that everything is going to move eventually. So this is what we're going to call the positive direction. Now notice that means that down on the mass hanging is positive and to the right on mass two is positive and to the right on mass one is also positive. So this I'm identifying as the positive direction. I'm, I'm summing the forces on the whole thing on the entire system in that positive direction. Here we go. Now, force, force of friction two is to the left and therefore negative, and the tension force is to the right on mass two and positive. And then this tension force is up on the mass hanging, which we defined as negative, and the force of gravity of the mass hanging is down and therefore positive. And that's equal to, again, mass times the acceleration in the direction that we're talking about, which is the, that positive direction, and it is the total acceleration and the total mass for the system. Now the acceleration again is equal to zero because the whole thing's at rest, so this whole thing is again equal to zero. Notice that the two tensions cancel out because one is positive, one is negative, and they are of equal magnitude. 
And we can add the force of friction 2 to both sides. We get force of friction 2 is equal to the force of gravity of the mass hanger. We can substitute in mu times the force normal for the force of friction 2. Because it's not moving, that's going to be the coefficient of static friction 2 times force normal 2. And that's equal to the equation for the force of gravity of the mass hanging, which is the mass hanging times the acceleration due to gravity. And we can substitute in for the normal force 2 from our equation holster. Equation, equation holster. <laughs> the mass 1 times the acceleration due to gravity plus mass 2 times the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, and that's equal to mass hanging times the acceleration due to gravity. And we can cancel out the acceleration due to gravity. And we get that the mass hanging is equal to the coefficient of static friction 2 times the quantity mass 1 plus mass 2. Part C. Now the mass hanging is large enough to cause the whole thing to move. The velocity is no longer equal to zero. However, that mass hanging is not large enough to cause the two blocks to slide relative to one another. They are moving together. Therefore, there is no slip. And we're, we're, what we are trying to do is to figure out the acceleration of the system. Now, the only change that happens in our free body diagram is the addition of these two forces of friction. Let's think about it for a minute. We know mass 1 is going to be accelerating to the right. It's going to be moving with, with mass 2. And some force must be causing that acceleration. And that is the force of friction 1. It's the only thing that could be causing the whole that mass 1 to move to the right. And there is a Newton's third law interaction pair. For every force of friction that mass 2 applies on mass 1, there must also be an equal but opposite force of friction that mass 1 applies on mass 2. Therefore, there is a force of friction to the left in the opposite direction of this force of friction on block 2. Now, Notice that there are no additions of forces in the y direction in our free body diagram, which means the sum of the forces in the y direction on mass 1 and the sum of the forces in the y direction on mass 2 actually are exactly the same and will give us the exact same equations, which are already in our equation, equation holster. holster. That's right. And so I've redrawn, I've written those out again over here just to make it clear because I'm going to have to erase all of this over here in order to solve this problem. Now we can sum the forces on the entire system in this positive direction that we defined earlier. We have a positive force of static friction 1 minus a force of static friction 1. Those two are going to cancel out. Plus a tension force and again minus a tension force and those two are going to cancel out. And minus the force of kinetic friction 2. It is important to identify that these two forces of friction are, are static because mass 1 and mass 2 are not moving relative to one another. They're not slipping, not sliding. However, this force of friction 2 is a kinetic force of friction because mass 2 is sliding relative to the table. Therefore, this interaction is kinetic. This interaction is static. And then lastly, we have the force of gravity hanging, which is in the positive direction. And that is equal to the total mass times the acceleration total, again, in the positive direction. So again, our force of static friction 1's cancel out and our tensions cancel out and we are left with a negative force of kinetic friction 2 plus the force of gravity of the mass hanging is equal to the total mass times the acceleration total. Substituting in equations, we have the coefficient of kinetic friction 2 times the force normal 2 for the force of kinetic friction 2. We have the mass hanging times the acceleration due to gravity for the force of gravity of the mass hanging. And for the total mass, we have mass 1 plus mass 2 plus the mass hanging. And again, times the acceleration total in the positive direction. Now we can substitute in for force normal 2 from our equation, equation holster. holster. That's right, our equation holster. Mass 1 times the acceleration due to gravity plus mass 2 times the acceleration due to gravity. Everything else remains the same. We can now divide both sides by the total mass, mass 1 plus mass 2 plus the mass hanging, and just cleaning everything up a little bit, we get that the acceleration of the whole thing in this positive direction that we defined is equal to the mass hanging minus the coefficient of kinetic friction 2 times the quantity mass 1 plus mass 2, that whole thing divided by the total mass, mass 1 plus mass 2 plus the mass hanging. The answer for part C. In part D, the mass hanging is large enough now such that mass 2 and mass 1 actually slip relative to one another. 
This actually doesn't change our free body diagram, but does change the force of friction one, force, our force of friction ones from static to kinetic friction. And it also means that we cannot sum the forces on the whole thing in the positive direction because the acceleration of one is going to be different than the acceleration of two and the hanging mass. We can sum the forces on two and the hanging mass together, but we have to sum the forces on mass one separately from two and the hanging mass. But it does mean that a still the sum of the forces in the y direction are the same and everything from our equation holster, equation holster is still the same. Part DI, figure out the acceleration of block one. So now we need to sum the forces in the X direction on block one. Some of the forces in the X direction on mass one, the only force acting in the X direction on mass one is that force of kinetic friction one. Kinetic again, because mass one and mass two are sliding relative to one another. Some of the forces are always equal to mass times the acceleration, it's mass one that times the acceleration of one in the X direction. Substituting in the equation for the force of kinetic friction one, that's the coefficient of kinetic friction one times force normal one. Uh, substituting in from our equation holster, the mass one times the acceleration due to gravity for force normal one, and that again is equal to mass one times the acceleration one in the x direction. Mass one cancels out, and the acceleration one is in the x direction, and it's equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction one times the acceleration due to gravity. The answer to part D, I. Part D double I, what is the acceleration of block two, which is going to be the same as the acceleration of the mass hanging because they're attached by the string. We sum the forces in the positive direction on mass two and the mass hanging in this positive direction. We get the negative force of kinetic friction two, negative force of kinetic friction one, positive tension, negative tension, and positive force of gravity of the mass hanging. That's equal to mass times the acceleration, well, we're talking about mass two and the mass hanging, times the acceleration of both of those in the positive direction. Substituting in equations, we get the negative coefficient of kinetic friction two times the force normal two, minus the coefficient of kinetic friction one times force normal one, plus the mass hanging times the acceleration due to gravity, that's equal to the quantity mass two plus mass hanging times the acceleration in the positive direction. Now we can substitute in from our uh, equation holster. And we get the negative coefficient of kinetic friction two times the quantity of mass one times the acceleration due to gravity plus mass two times the acceleration due to gravity minus the coefficient of kinetic friction one times mass one times the acceleration due to gravity plus mass hanging times the acceleration due to gravity equals mass two plus mass hanging that quantity multiplied by the acceleration into the positive direction, which is what we're solving for. Therefore, we divide by the quantity mass two plus mass hanging and we'll pretty it up a little bit and we'll get our answer. And we get for the acceleration in the positive direction of mass two and the mass hanging, the acceleration due to gravity times the quantity of mass hanging minus the coefficient of kinetic friction one times mass one minus the coefficient of kinetic friction two times the quantity of mass one plus mass two, that whole thing divided by mass two plus mass hanging. That brings us to the end of my solutions. I hope you enjoyed learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you. Thanks. Equation holster. <laughs>